Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Chris and Vainan from Threefold, coming from Cape Town, South Africa, and all the way from Dubai. We are both co-founders of Threefold Tech. We're a European-based deep tech software engineering company. And I want to tell you a little bit about Threefold today and announce our partnership with OwnCloud, which we are extremely excited about. Obviously, everyone's very familiar with uh, OwnCloud as a product. So the idea today is to give you a little bit of background on Threefold and really what makes it unique in the partnering of Threefold and OwnCloud. I'm going to ask my good colleague, uh, Vainant, to do the slide transitions for me. Um, slide number two, please, Vainant. So Threefold is an organization. Why we exist really is that we believe the internet and the internet infrastructure is absolutely crucial and critical in the evolution of our nation or as our global nation and as a global civilization. But the internet today is not what was originally envisaged and it's lost track of some key attributes. So we as an organization have gone about designing a technology that seeks to deliver on the original dream of the internet and what, why it was originally designed and meaning decentralization sustainability, equality, and ensuring our data sovereignty and privacy, and ensuring that everybody has equal opportunity to partake in this digital economy. Next slide, please, Vanna. So many would ask, well, what is wrong with the, the internet as we know it today? Well, if any of you have watched the documentaries like Social Dilemma or Creepy Line, you would have come to realize that the internet today has become extremely centralized with more than 80% of today's internet infrastructure being owned by less than 20 organizations. It certainly is not scalable in its current design with more than, well, almost half the world's population still not having internet access and having the luxury of what you and I take for granted every single day. It's certainly not private by design in terms of the information that it holds and the data that it, it's entrusted with. It certainly has proven to be insecure with 100 billion loss on average per annum through cybersecurity infringements. And it's certainly not sustainable as many of you might not know that already today the internet consumes more than 10% of the world's power generation. So with this as a backdrop, we embarked on a mission as an organization to design, next slide please, Vanat, to design a pure software-based technology that could meet the challenge of bringing about the internet and taking it back to its former glory. Without going into the deep roots of the technology itself, there are two core elements to this technology. On the left, there is an operating system that allows you to federate any digital infrastructure and assets together and bring them together and aggregate them into a secure and autonomous internet grid. It's a stateless operating system on a very light footprint that it doesn't matter the, the brand of the hardware, it doesn't matter the type of CPU, it doesn't matter the color of the box, it doesn't matter the form factor. You're able to bring together digital assets, regardless of all those characteristics, and aggregate them or federate them together into one distributed and decentralized utility of compute storage and networking capacity. Then on the right-hand side, you've got how do you interface with this digital infrastructure, and that is the three bot. The three bot, think of it as your digital twin. It's yourself in this digital ecosystem. It's how you manage your full digital life in terms of the applications you consume, maybe the applications that you want to deploy and build. And it's how you manage your data, how you control your sovereignty and privacy in this digital world. And those are the two core pillars of this technology. It sounds very simplistic, but it's taken us more than 15 years to develop this technology. And it's, it's come about today in delivering uh, what we present next in terms of the threefold grid. Next slide, please, Vainant. When you bring these two core elements together and you intertwine them through a, a bespoke blockchain technology that we also built, you land up with the ability to build out internet infrastructure and capacity that meets some key attributes. Sovereignty, I've mentioned a few times. By far, this is the leading topic with the audiences that I speak to, whether it's the European Commission, whether it's Gaia-X, whether it's indig indigenous American tribes in the US, or whether it's governments in the in the continent of africa where i originate from data sovereignty with a realization of the value of data in this economy data sovereignty is certainly top of the pops in terms of uh, key attributes that these uh, audiences seek obviously closely alongside that is the the privacy and ensuring the ownership of data 
to each individual and affording them the right with whom and what they share their data with. Third to that is autonomy. Now autonomy, consider this is a key aspect to our technology because consider the challenge and why their internet infrastructure is so lacking and underdeveloped in the emerging markets. Autonomy is key when you talk about a decentralized system like this and building out distributed infrastructure everywhere. A simple quick analogy is consider a data center with a thousand uh, servers racked in a data center, all under lock and key, all in one location, able to operate and support and manage in one location. Now consider taking those thousand devices and distributing them over a thousand locations. It simply does not work in the traditional way of doing IT. So autonomy was key in ensuring that there is zero or very limited human involvement in the operation of that infrastructure. Ensuring that regardless of who is hosting that infrastructure, regardless of whether it's on a lamppost or on a radio mast or within a data center, it can be trusted. And so autonomy in terms of the operations and the securing of the infrastructure and the data that infrastructure holds was absolutely essential. And that is a, a key point of differentiation in our technology. Decentralized to, to, for the obvious reason, we spoke about with more than 80% of the infrastructure owned by just a few organizations, ensuring that everybody can partake, to partake in this internet architecture. Everybody can contribute and everyone can consume. Cost efficient. As a, almost as a byproduct, the efficiencies we built into the system have resulted in us in being able to deliver compute storage and network capacity at a fraction of the current industry cost. Overcoming another barrier to entry in developing and investing in infrastructure into the emerging markets and enabling internet capacity at a much lower price point. Compatible in being completely interoperable with all the industry standards like Kubernetes and Helm and all the kind of interfaces that the developer world would, would seek. And Vaynant will do a demo of the deployment of our own cloud later and, and uh, show you these kind of interfaces that we have adopted to make sure that we're not introducing something net new to the, to the, uh, the, the digital world. Secure in that the system is blockchain based, it's immutable, and it's an always a pen based system. So we truly can guarantee the security of your data with a zero attack surface on the infrastructure. And then endlessly scalable because you build on demand. You simply deploy capacity in the form factor and of the magnitude that you require in the location, the location that you require. And you add it through the federation, through the operating system to the larger ecosystem. Next slide, please, Vainas. So this exists today in what we call the threefold grid. It's our, it's our single biggest proof point of this technology. And the threefold grid is exactly what we've shown you. It's a bunch of infrastructure owned by many, many different stakeholders that is aggregated together with that operating system and exists already today in, in 50 countries at almost 80 petabytes of storage over almost 700 locations and with almost 24,000 calls. So this is just today, and this is the substrate or the foundation upon which this partnership with OwnCloud has been founded in providing a secure decentralized infrastructure on top of which OwnCloud can be consumed. Next slide, please, Vayner. So with that, I'm very pleased to announce the partnering of OwnCloud and Threefold. Well, this is the first time we are making public statements about this. And it's been my pleasure to have worked with the OwnCloud team until now. And I know that there are great things ahead of us as we bring together these two key technologies. We will be branded own cloud powered by threefold grid. And when you bring these technologies together, it delivers on some of those key attributes that I referred to earlier. Being able to use own cloud and ensure the sovereignty of your data, being able to ensure the security of your data within, on top, within own cloud on top of this infrastructure ensuring the privacy of all user data, ensuring ultimate scalability in being able to adopt across these 50 countries and it's growing as we speak, be able to adopt infrastructure regardless, um, you know, across many countries and as it grows day by day, offering more and more infrastructure or being able to adopt and use your own infrastructure with exactly the same technology. So being able to build out potentially an enterprise own cloud deployment with exactly the same attributes where you're able to federate all your digital assets using the threefold technology and deploy own cloud on top of that infrastructure in a completely private instance. All the autonomy stays, regardless of whether it's a private or a public deployment, with all the autonomous, autonomous operations and the security and the zero hacking surface. It's fully compliant by design in, in terms of things like GDPR and KYC, et cetera. 
um, and it's fully interoperable with all the industry standards that we spoke about. So we really see a great path forward as we move down this road in, in uh, the partnership with OwnCloud. And Vaynard has a really exciting announcement to make after his demo. So thank you for your time. I'm going to hand over and give the, the, the lion's share of the time to my good friend Vaynard, who's going to walk you through a live demonstration of how to do, we have automated and the fast deployment of OwnCloud on top of the grid. And I will see you in the Q&A room. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chris. I'll, uh, I'll try to take it forward. Hi, my name is Wijnand, um, made in Holland, and uh, very proud to be here and be part of this announcement and, and showcase to show what we can do. And what I would like to talk and take you through is a three-step approach. And again, like Chris explained really, really well, it starts with a fabric, a fabric of capacity that is needed to actually run applications, to store data, to process data, and to transport data. And we do that through a very light OS called Zero OS. And I'll show you how you can get that on a node. Like Chris said, this is by people, for people. Anybody can participate. The reward model around participation lies in a digital currency that you can earn by doing so. And then there's two flavors. So if and when I want to actually run applications, I can obviously opt in and have my own capacity being part of this grid and being part of the consumption model that I have. But also I can have this public grid, which Chris used as the numbers tool, or Chris explained the numbers tool, which is already significant. We can use that as well to actually deploy on. Then in step two, and again, we use this three bots to actually control all of the autonomous capacity that we have here because we don't want people, and again, we love people, but we don't want people to have any operational tasks on this grid to do for any of the system administration tasks. So not very shown here, but underwater, in order to get to what we refer to a virtual data center, which exists as your private space in which you can operate applications by known industry standards and orchestration methods, there is an underwater deployment mechanism that uses blockchain, uh, three bots, private and public keys, and so on, which I don't have time to go into today. If or when there is interest, please go to the Q&A room, and we'll talk a little bit more in detail around that later on. And then on top of that, step three is to actually deploy an own cloud installation and showcase that, that that is really straightforward. And we've boiled it down, these three steps, to ultimately very simple steps that are basically doable by anybody that has some knowledge about traditional IT and some knowledge about um, how to do this. Obviously, not everybody wants to do all three steps. Some people don't want to get involved into any of the hardware deployments and participating in that by people, for people um, utility grid. That's okay, because you can still participate as a consumer. No problem whatsoever. You will then get some very easy to handle interfaces to actually push some buttons give a little bit of feedback on questions that are being asked and then still deploy. So having said that, let's go through those steps uh, one by one. And one of the first steps that I wanna show is that there is actually um, an explorer which exists out there, which gives you a current and present view of all of the capacity that is actually um, able and available on this grid. And these are the numbers that Chris showed, plus or minus a few notes here and there. And then if or when you opt in to actually participate and start creating capacity, you need to announce yourself, you need to get yourself an identity, and you need to get yourself a so-called farm identity. Um, we call people that participate in this model farmers, not miners. We love the green aspect of the, the grid so much that we also um, named the participants in a very green way farmers. And what you do is you go to a public site here um, after you've got your farmer ID, in this case, I'll use the one that we have and use for our capacity that we present. I'll tell it that I want to build a production node. And then just to make it easy, I'll tell it to download an image which I can store on a USB key or which I can store into um, one of the, and as you can see, I already did that, but you can store that uh, on a USB key to make the system boot. What I'll then try to do here, is actually use uh, a virtualization technology on my computer um, and actually launch, as you can see, that's the same image, launch that virtual machine, which will then um, 
boot on my computer. And what is important here to mention is this file is only two megabytes in size. It only has pointers to where it can find and where it can download that particular OS, and it loads it into memory, it operates it into memory, it doesn't store it at all on a local disk. Because again, from the get-go, we've decided that we didn't want people to administer, to do software updates, to actually do anything with that OS. Again, that brings security, but it also brings ease of use and makes it accessible for anyone. So the operating system is downloaded by this unique key that you have um, by giving yourself a farmer ID, and then it boots into memory. I'll leave that on, and I'll leave that going forward, because this will take a minute or a minute and a half, and I don't think I've got a minute and a half to actually wait for this. So I'll go on to the next step. And the next step is, now that we've chosen to participate and create some form of computing storage and actually contribute that to the grid, next level up is to get myself um, one of these virtual data centers. And these virtual data centers are spanning multiple nodes, as I try to indicate here. You can actually choose based on what you find here. And this is just a graphical view of what that grid is. Underwater, in code, you've got a very, very granular way of actually searching for capacity, making sure that it only exists, for example, in one country, or that it exists in, in the European Union, for example, to make your application and your data storage and processing um, GDPR compliant, for example. So you've got complete control, or your IT department has complete control to secure capacity, to reserve capacity, to use capacity of farmers that exists within a certain territory. Um, taking that into account, I'll have, and we can share these URLs later on, but there is a launching facility that actually allows you to launch such a VDC. Um, and to log into that launching facility, I need to identify myself. The way we've opted, and you saw a little glimpse of it in, in Chris's presentation, is that we have an app on the phone which we use for two particular main reasons. One is to store a private key, which I can sign in to any of the um, uh, compliant applications with by signing a login request, which is what I'm going to do here and now. And the other thing is that we also have, because the, the actual payments for using and consuming capacity on this grid are done in a digital currency. So by having that private key on my phone, I also have the ability to make payments for using capacity. So I get a challenge by actually taking that icon of the lion's head. I, I type that in on my phone, and now I'm in the VDC, the Virtual Data Center Deployer. First, I'll, I'll show you that obviously in terms of time, because we have 20 minutes and we need to be fast, I, I did prepare myself a little bit by having some of them here and available. But if you go through the steps of trying to add a new one, it's a very simple approach where you need to give it a name, you need to provide a key that is your unique access, then you need to decide whether you want small, medium, large, and it's got one master node and a couple of workers of different size. And then in this case, I can select whether I want it, the deployer to select farms on which I deploy, or I can manually select. Manual selection will give me a few questions, again, for which I don't have time here and now. But it asks you a few questions in terms of select the form that you want to deploy on, um, how many distributed nodes do you want for your compute, for your storage, and so on. And it allows you to do all of that. For now, in simplicity, I'll let it select um, the farms that are going to be included. And then I'll let this run as well a little bit to be able to go through. This will stop now at a point in time where I need to start paying for it, which will send me with a QR code, which I can pay for with my app on the phone. Now let's log into one of these, because obviously prepared, this is um, a VDC, a virtual data center that I have prepared for. It's available and ready and waiting for me. Um, and as you can see, we use the same principle of logging in, signing a login request with a private key, which has a major security advantage. There's no username or password stored anywhere here. I get presented that my app on my phone knows where to look in a blockchain for a login request. And the only thing that my app on my phone does is signing that request with my private key. Um, you can use that over and over and over for various different purposes. And we've even taken it to the extent of actually also being able to log into your 
first and deployed um, own cloud instance. Let's start with a little bit more technology and underwater thing. So a Kubernetes cluster, because in the end, the VDC launches a full-blown Kubernetes cluster, as, as we said in the introduction. Mine here has actually five nodes, about two, and then I added, there's the add node, and you can add nodes in any particular location that you want of any particular size. Some of them are large, some of them are small. And just to showcase it to you that all of them are on a particular node, and if you copy this and you go back to, uh, if you copy this and you go back to that uh, cockpit, you can actually look up which node it is, where it sits. Uh, this is the other way around. Normally you would select it first, but I just want to show you that you can find it back and you'll see that this is in Belgium where we have our um, office of the 3Full Tech and it's a well-used node um, that has been up for a long time in, in the farm number one that, I, that we call Free Farm. So, Everything is actually available, and you can also see if you select another one, then obviously the node is a different one. Some more details, but again, Q&A later on may be a better place to, to actually look at this. Private network, um, all the way, there's no access to it if you don't actually give it a public IP address. Then let's go back to that initial one. So now let's get to the own cloud deployment. We've created, on top of this Kubernetes cluster, a few click deployments where we can actually go through and do uh, an own cloud deployment. Um, in the meantime, while this is starting, you can now see that this node is fully booted. It's fully booted, it's fully connected to the network, it's given itself an identity. Thank you very much. I've been told to speed up, so I will speed up. Um, I'll give it uh, this name, which I start now making typos, I have to select for the um, own cloud installation, again, small, medium, large, I'll go for the medium size, and that's all the information I need to provide. It will now do all of the work in terms of doing the installations and actually deploying it within my virtual data center on this um, grid and give me a URL at the end for accessing it. Fast forwarding, because I had two minutes left, so I need to be respecting. This will now deploy inside my um, Kubernetes cluster. And um, if I want me then fast forward, we'll get a presentation like this. So it's in this URL, in this mode. If I go, but I'm sure that most people that are in this uh, conference have seen this, so I don't need to spend too much time on it. Um, I can actually show it with a password, and you'll see here that that threefold connect login methodology is, is available as well. So with that, it was a rush, I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to give you the full spiel of actually going from nothing to installing a server, to getting yourself a virtual data center, to within that virtual data center, get the ability in two minutes to actually deploy an own cloud installation. And with that said, I thank you for your attention, I thank you for your time, and look we, forward to see you in the Q&A group. We just, uh, can you make the announcement of the early adopter program before we wrap up? Uh, sorry for that. Yes, I can. Um, there's one more slide which I can go through, which is the uh, early adopter program. Just one, 10 seconds. Uh, yes, so we're launching this and we're inviting the, from the audience uh, uh, people that actually uh, want to participate in this and have a first go at it themselves. Um, we'll have space and room and processing power for 10,000 users available um, for three months at zero cost. Come and see us and uh, looking forward to the Q&A uh, later after this meeting. Thank you very much.